Hey everybody, I'm John Harris and this is the Exponential Entrepreneurs Academy. Question I get asked a lot is, okay, so we talk about exponentials, but how do we actually implement it? What is more detail that we should be thinking about within our organizations? So I've already discussed the importance of an MTP. An MTP is your massive transformative purpose. You need something that's a big idea, a big problem that you are solving. With the power of technology uh, that we have today, it's very important to try and solve big problems. The bigger the problem, the more traction you have, uh, the more magnetism it has towards getting other people to help you and other people interested and involved in what you're doing. So an individual can have the power now to, to make a difference in the world. I want you to think about the MTP and then I'd like to have, if you thought about a page where you split on the right hand side and the left hand side, you do a dividing line and on the one side you're going to have your ideas, an acronym called ideas and on the right hand side you're going to have scale. So let's start with scale and the first thing I want to talk about is with the S for scale is staff on demand. The thing about exponential organizations are they are very flat they're very fast and they're better. The first thing is staff. Organizations, as you know about Kodak, that had up to 130,000 odd employees and was usurped by Instagram with 13 employees, which was sold to Facebook for a billion dollars. So that power of having less staff and your costs come down radically. Um, so you can go to places to get staffing. You can go to, we know, Odesk and Freelancer and various platforms where you can go and get help to, to work on your projects and, and to do things for you. And you can do that whilst you are in iterations of a product and while you're trying to get things to happen. It saves a huge amount of pressure on costs to the organization. The next thing we need to think about is the community and crowd. So when we start to look at open source or we look at various platforms where you have people that are interested in a specific subject, a topic, a solution, a problem, you have a community that revolves around that issue and you can harness that community for ideas and you can also then go to the crowd which is everybody and get more people to come into the community and to where you're going to start to create fanatical fans. The community is very powerful for getting ideas for sending out, getting surveys done and various aspects of a minimum viable product that you can then put out to them and see whether the changes and what the changes that they require. A lot of times, and we know this with marketing and with product creation and with the latest in technology platforms, is that a lot of things that we think about as being important, people in general don't. The crowd doesn't. And a lot of times they will see it's something else that we haven't thought about that we need to incorporate into our product. A lot of these big platforms change from the initial product that they launch and they morph into something completely different through that rapid iteration of products out to the community. Next, uh, we talk about scale, the S, the C, now we're talking about the A and we're talking about algorithms. And we know that the power of AI and the algorithms is exponential and it's accelerating. Every day now we are seeing new things that are happening within the, the realm of AI. Um, we need to think of something like Google with its algorithm on its page, its page likes and getting its page ranking. And we know that it doesn't look at the page and that it just simply looks at the number of clicks going through. But that algorithm then gives that feedback into big data and, and enables a ranking to take place. This is happening in the medical industry. It's happening everywhere you look. So it's very, very powerful. And this is something else you're going to need to bring into your, your organization, your enterprise, when you think about scaling it on an exponential level. Next, when we scale, we're down to the L, um, we leverage the assets. You can leverage machinery where you don't have to pay for the capitalization. You can utilize somebody else's machine um, if it's a very expensive machine. You see that with Tensor and Google where people can come in to do algorithms and look at uh, various aspects of AI um, through Tensor. Um, you can also do it with space. You don't have to buy a building. These things are very expensive and you can already see by what I've been saying is how much the cost is reduced and how in uncompetitive normal corporate uh, or organizations, normal types of business brick and mortar are when it comes to fighting against these very fast, flat, 
and agile uh, exponential organizations. So you can have, a, instead of owning a building, you can use some sh shared space, some co-working space. You can use it for the length of a project or a certain length of time, and it saves you having to have that massive cost uh, of capitalization in, in owning a building or expanding onto a new section of a building. Uh, next and last on this side, on the, on the right hand side, which was scale, is the E, which is um, for engagement. And as I mentioned, with the power of the community and the power of technology, we can get iterations out to the community. We can engage the community in what we're doing and see the people that are interested in what we're doing. We can first of all see if there is enough traction to have a sustainable market for what we're looking to do. And we can see then within that market what it is that that market requires. What, what is it that they want to have within the product range and your platform that you're trying to develop. So a scale on the one side is really talking about your creatives, how you're gonna create things, um, and, and now you're going to look at the left hand side, which was ideas. Here you're going to start to get more control. Um, you're looking at various aspects that help your company uh, stabilize, make, create stability within that because things are changing so fast, you're going to need some stability as well. So under ideas, the first one is interfaces. And you're really going to filter down your interface and look at workflows. Remember, you can have uh, remote working single individuals or groups and you can have them you can have interfaces and workflows all put together pulled through through technologies so the power of technology breaks down geographic barriers um, the next thing on ideas is the d is dashboards again these dashboards giving you real-time information real-time numbers statistics on what it is that you you're doing and the response and the accuracy of what you're trying to achieve you can look at your dashboard and you can measure things and get real numbers come back very quickly in real time this enables you to change management do change management very rapidly again very powerful tools um, the next part of ideas is the um, experimentation as I mentioned you're gonna need to create new iterations of what you're doing you're gonna need to experiment normally experimentation in manufacturing and the old way of doing things was very expensive in fact uh, it was too cost, cost costly to do on a regular basis so what we've got now is you can do a minimum viable product you can put it out there you can experiment with new ideas you can see whether the crowd likes it or dislikes it there are things that you can do all the time and you can make changes through experimentation which will then change the direction of what your product can do and what it's doing for your market. Um, autonomy, you can have small groups of people working very highly skilled, working together or remotely and you can still pull those back into your, your main platform because of the technology that's, ab that's available now. So that autonomy, you want them in separate areas doing some crazy ideas, creating some radical changes and you can pull those changes back into your main platform. Lastly, on, on ideas, you're going to look at the social, and again, we obviously, everything now is social. It's not just the social channels that you can be on the various platforms. It's also the interaction of your marketing, your email marketing, everything you do is within the workspace. We're looking to create companies that have great social cohesion, and <clears throat> those kind of environments are what are having the greatest impact in the world today. So social is very, very powerful. Everything we're doing is on a social level. Do they know, like, and trust me? Is this fun to do? Is it fun to be here? I could take my skills and work elsewhere, but I enjoy this particular environment. These are very, very powerful changes that have taken place within the exponential organization. And I think when you think about this, if you're an individual and you have some ideas and you want to create an enterprise, something bigger, you can start to think about these things, write out your massively transformative purpose, what it is within health, within food, within clean energy, what is it that you'd like to be involved in and what, what can you press bring to the table and then who could you have as your core team, your technologist, the person who's going to be the business, you can be the visionary and somebody else who's going to be doing this interaction and pushing towards the response of the marketplace to, so that you can make the necessary changes. So as usual, I hope this has been useful and remember to like us and, and, and you can listen to us on our podcast and we'll see you in the next episode.